Designing your own propeller blades can be challenging, which is why many people buy over-the-counter propellers or choose standard airfoil profiles to create 3D models. A paper by Ian Tracy from MIT called Propeller Design and Analysis for a Small Autonomous UAV is a great source if you want to get more insight on propellers and how to design one. If you decide to use standard NACA airfoils, first let's see what the notation means. The four-digit series is the most common one. The first digit means the maximum camber as a percentage of the cord. The second digit shows the position of the maximum camber also as a percentage of the cord but in tens of percent. The last two digits represent the maximum thickness as a percentage of the cord. Because the drone propellers are designed to spin and change the angular velocity or RPM rapidly, the blades are usually very thin to reduce weight and the thrust needed to produce a change in the RPM. As a reminder, the blades are also twisted along the length such that the pitch is correlated with the airspeed. The reason is that different points along the length move at different speeds through air, with the tip being the fastest. To find the airfoil profiles, search NACA airfoil dataset on the internet and click the UIUC website or go to this link. For this example, I will be using the 6412 profile. If you click on the GIF format, you will see an image of the airfoil. To import this curve in SOLIDWORKS, you will need to scale it and save it to a TXT file, which can be done with Notepad. Go back and click on the DAT file. Copy the two columns in Notepad and copy the last row before the first one, so that you end up with a closed curve. Save, then open Excel and import the Notepad file. Make sure you select the limited for type and add space to the list of delimiters. As you can see, the columns are not delimited properly, so I have to go back in Notepad and press tab for the first two rows to make sure they are at the same level as the other rows. The columns are now imported correctly. SOLIDWORKS will ask you to import the XYZ coordinates, so we need to add zeros for the Z column. To scale the airfoil, click on the cell to the right and type equals 0.8 times then click the first X coordinate and press Enter. Drag the corner of the cell downwards to automate the process for the whole column. Repeat the process for Y and then copy the Z column. Then copy the three columns and paste them in a new document in Notepad. Now in SOLIDWORKS, go to Insert, Curves, Curve through XYZ. Click Browse and select the TXT file with the scaled coordinates, then click OK. The airfoil profile is now inserted. It is on the front plane because the Z coordinate is zero at every point. In the next video, I will show you how to use this airfoil profile to create your 3D propeller.